Hey Sharks, my name's Cars and Zebras, and I'd like to present a new twist on an old hobby. It's drag racing with toilet humor. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's funny, right, guys? You're now in the lexicon of the craziest pitches ever on Shark Tank. Go on. I can't join you guys. But, but Kevin, I, I'm I... out. F you, Kevin, you suck anyway. Let me ask you a question. If I offered you $30 million for the company, would you take it? Oh, hell yeah, Mark. Now Done. get over here and show your zebra some love. Oh, God, I love a man hug. 1965 Chevrolet Corvette. And I can hear the collective release of dry, crusty ejaculate from all the late-life Corvette fans after seeing this one. That's a holy grail, Corvette. Ah, uh, yeah, Gramps, it is. So now get back to your shredded wheat and let me finish my story. Okay. <laughs> It might look like an everyday Corvette, maybe even, so to speak, the brandy love of the Corvette world. But take it out for a ride and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and that's because up front there's an absolute beast of an engine. It's succulent, it's sensual, and it is oh so moist. It's Betty Crocker. <laughs> But as usual, I'm racing to the finish line far too quickly, so let's take a break and lube up first. In 1965, the base Corvette came with a 327 V8 rated 250 horsepower. And that was for little wannabe babies. Do I look like I enjoy wearing a diaper and breastfeeding? <laughs> I'll never tell. If you had just an extra measly $292, you could get the mid-year option L78 396QV8. So in this situation, you know my favorite saying. Make it rain on those bitches. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we love to have fun here. <laughs> and now you're probably thinking, well that 396 isn't terribly rare. Chevrolet used it in other models. Yes. Thanks, Steve. I was getting to that. But in the Corvette, the L78 was only used for this one year, making it a... Holy Shisha. And that L78 was an absolute monster. We're talking compression ratio 11 to 1, forged internals, aluminum intake manifold, 4-bolt main, solid lifter cam, and that beast was making 425 horsepower at 6,400 RPM. Oh shoot, did somebody forget to invite Torque to this party? F no! 415 pound feet at 4,000 RPM. Notice there's no air conditioning. This car is strictly only fans. But it does have a few interesting options, including those wheels, which were $322, and the side mount exhaust, that was $134. And those pipes might make this car as loud and obnoxious as Richard Rawlings, but the difference being that the Corvette doesn't have chlamydia. So there's that, I guess, unlike Mr. Koala over here. Being that the L78 loves to rev, aggressive gearing can be of benefit. Oh, and this car is definitely trying to take advantage of that with a set of four 56 gears. Chevy guy's about to flip for this car. I love Chevrolet. <laughs> Want to know something interesting about the 1965 Corvette? This was actually the first year for four-wheel disc brakes, so put that in your back pocket and feel free to impress your friends. But, I mean, who are we kidding? If you're watching this video, you don't have friends. When it comes to cars, everybody has a preference when it comes to size. Some prefer small, others medium, and some like myself prefer full-blown morbid obesity. I'm talking 10 liters of Mountain Dew a day, plus a medical necessity of a CPAP. <laughs> Regardless of your preference, this car's weight might surprise you. It's small in size and has a fiberglass body, but would you believe that with the driver sitting inside, this car weighed in at 3,676 pounds? Now, who here likes a cheap car? Raise your hand. Okay, now you can lower your hand and go dunk your head in the toilet. Because this car wasn't for cheap peasants. The convertible started at $4,106. Then the L78 was $292. That four-speed manual was $188. And then mandated with the L78 was a transistor ignition system. That was $75. Add that all up, it's $4,661. And keep in mind, that's with no other options. And if you adjust for inflation, today that'd be about $44,500. With a price tag like that, these cars were quite rare. Of the convertible Corvettes produced in 1965, only 1,542 had that L78 V8. So I guess if you want to buy one of these holy grails today, well, you better be willing to say goodbye to your 401k. Carlos Gonzalez. <laughs> Roden Track Magazine tested one of these cars in August of 1965. It had a 370 rear and it ran 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds and the quarter mile in 14.1 seconds at 103 miles per hour. Ooh, ooh, 
Lick, it's me excited. 1978 Chevrolet Camaro Z28. Mm, and just looking at this thing is making my face go numb. And sure, you're probably thinking that, well, that Camaro's from 1978. It can't be that quick. Well, trust me, this thing's about as innocent as a stepsister that keeps getting stuck in the washing machine. Oh no, sir, help, I'm stuck. Oh, finally. From the factory, it had a 350 V8 with a hydraulic lifter cam, two bolt mains, and a compression ratio of... 8.2 to 1. Even with that, the 350 still mustered 185 net horsepower, not too bad. And get this, 280 pound-feet of net torque at only 2400 RPM. So Camaro liked to get low. <laughs> even more impressive is that it made that power even through a single catalytic converter. Yes, this was the exhaust system that came stock on the 1978 Camaro Z28. Those actually aren't mufflers, they were resonators. But before them is a single catalytic converter. <sighs> I'm not angry, I'm just really disappointed. So if you bought this car and you wanted to rev up that engine and expected a nice little vroom vroom, well, you're gonna get more of a uh, cars and zebras after Taco Bell binge sort of sound. <laughs> So just think about everything you could gain if you remove this stock exhaust and have a nice free-flowing mandrel bent system. I mean, that's a lot of horsepower on the table. And yes, this is allowed in pure stock racing along with several other mild modifications, just like the original NHRA pure stock class in the 1960s. And believe me, this car is taking advantage of a few of those mods, so it will be quicker than you expect. And if you're a giant dumb dumb and haven't figured out how to read the video description box after all these years of me posting these videos, well, I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's real easy. Just follow the arrow down, down. No, no, we're not gonna click on another website. We're gonna do this down, down. Okay, now you'll see video description and you can even click show more to show more. Please do that if you haven't already and review all of the rules of this class, you giant dumb fuck. You see those stripes? I love them. I think they look great, but some people, they're not really a fan. Here's an interesting factoid for you. The stripe package that came with the Z28 in 1978, you were stuck with it. You couldn't delete it. Kind of like those nudes that you accidentally sent to your own mother. I'm sorry, Mom. And, uh... It was really cold that day. And welcome everybody to a new segment that I'm calling Top and Bottom Comments, where we review comments from the previous full-length video. Last video's top comment comes from Cuda Rebels Cars and Diecasts. He says, good to see you back, buddy. Happy to see your funky sense of humor is still here, too. Great race between two automotive giants. I've always been a pro Mopar kind of guy, but I also respect Ford and love Torinos, and this one sure hauled some ass, too. Great race and great cars, brother. I have to agree, there's nothing that I enjoy more than two giant automotives. And now for the bottom comment, Frank Latham says, I like the car content, but the ornographic additions is disgusting. No longer watching what used to be fun. Uh, you know, in my day, we used to jerk our little ding-dongs to the J.C. Petty catalog and we liked it. But don't even get me started on these darn EVs. Cars today are absolute garbage. <laughs> Backing the 350 was a TH350 three-speed automatic transmission. And those things are fairly efficient. They don't leach away too much power. Unlike my ex-girlfriend who sucked me dry. And not in the, the good way. Out back, you're going to find a set of three... <coughs> oh, 42. 342 gears. It's a good driver. It should get off the line pretty easy. These second generation Camaros definitely aren't as light as the first generation. And this car with the driver sitting in it was... 3,790 pounds. Even with that, if this were my car, I would look at it every day and I would say, it's gonna take a lot to take me away from you. Z28 was a fantastic deal in 1978. It was only $5,603. And of course, a lot more options were available, but you could get into one for that price. And if you adjust for inflation, that's only $25,852 today. Cocaine and disco ball sold separately. And because of that, they sold a ton of these cars. There were 272,000 total Camaros produced that year, and nearly 55,000 were Z28s. Car and driver tested a Camaro Z28 in March of 1978. It ran 16 flat at 91 miles per hour in the quarter mile. 
Not too bad for a car that was completely showroom stock. Keep in mind, that's not this car. They've taken advantage of some of the modifications allowed in this class. So this thing is definitely going to, how do you say it? Eat some a It's gonna eat some a for sure. Wait, no, 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 no. It's haul some a This thing's gonna haul some major a It's gonna haul so much a you're not gonna know what to do with all the a that this thing can haul. 1421 at 98 in the right lane. 1421 at 98 in the right lane for Cam. And in the first round, it's the Camaro that takes home the win, running 14.21 seconds at 98.96 miles per hour. In the other lane, the Corvette sounded like they had some issues with that 1 2 shift, but they still ran a 1463 at 101.66 miles per hour. Let's see what happens in round two. He's going up against Troy T at a, say that again, Dennis, Montague, Michigan. I have to ask for a go. And in the second round, it's the Corvette that was able to power shift their way to a win, running 1384 at 103.87 miles per hour. Meanwhile, the Camaro ran 13.97 seconds at 99.17 miles per hour. With things tied up one all, let's check out that final round. Troy C. out of Montag, Michigan. And in the final round, the Corvette takes home the win, running 13.85 seconds at 103.85 miles per hour. In the other lane, the Camaro looked good, but not quite good enough today, running 14.11 seconds at 98.85 miles per hour. Huge thanks to the owners for bringing out these cars, and would you believe the driver of the Camaro was only 16 years old? He built this car with his father, and he did an absolute awesome job. Hey, come on, we've been making these videos for years. I can see you're still not subscribed, so make sure you do that, and while you're over there, just hit the like button. I mean, who else is giving you content like this. Nobody. I love you guys.